Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and in collaboration with Chip Theory Games, I'm once again bringing you a gear lock guide. And today we're going to be talking about Gasket. And so I've got all of Gasket's stuff out. We've got its gear lock mat, its dice, and its reference sheet. And we're going to go through all of these so that you can feel confident playing Gasket at your next game night. So some things to know about Gasket. It's not technically a gear lock, but you should treat it like one. It is a powerful hydromech who can do a lot of damage on its own or as part of your party. Gasket starts with only one HP, but Gasket is also immune to several devastating effects. So D Gasket is immune to poison, weaken, terrify, stun, and even bleed. Sadly, Gasket is still able to experience fatigue and all other status effects. So don't get too confident. And also do not trade it any loot that you were planning to enjoy later because Gasket will probably incinerate it for its own purposes. In other words, Gasket is a very cool gear lock that's not technically a gear lock, but we're gonna need to adjust the way that we think about Gasket in order to employ it to best effect. Gasket's gonna start with three dice on its mat, and these are gonna be crucial to its progress during the game. So one of Gasket's starting dice is called Hydro Valve, and we are going to explain how it works very shortly because it's crucial for everything Gasket does. And then similarly, Gasket's also going to start with the primary canister on its mat, and this is also a very important die. The other starting die that Gasket gets is actually a consumable. It's called Power Converter, and this will also be an interesting part of Gasket's strategy. So we're going to start with Power Converter on the mat as well. As you can see, Gasket has four professions and then consumables. So we have the hydro powered profession, which is crucial to everything else that Gasket does, as you will see. We have mode derail, which is going to do some very interesting stuff to baddies, as you're going to see. We have mode destroy, which is perhaps even more interesting. And then we have mode direct. And this is very interesting because this is essentially programming Gasket to do stuff, but there can be unintended consequences, which we're going to get to. And then Power Converter is Gasket's only consumable, which will work in a way that's different from any other gear lock. Other things to notice about Gasket are that it is melee ranged, which means that you can start Gasket on either a melee or a ranged space on the battle mat. Gasket has a melee attack style, but also has lots of different abilities that can be used at range. So you get a lot of choice with how you want to deploy it. Actually, something that makes Gasket particularly interesting is that none of its skills are actually applied to its target. So most gear locks will have a target that they apply a skill to. Gasket is more untargeted and that makes it more versatile. So Gasket has the opportunity to maybe even damage multiple baddies per turn if you're planning carefully. So let's put Gasket out on the map on the range position for now, but I may move it just for demonstration purposes later. So here's Gasket's chip and it's measly one starting health. That's something you're gonna to wanna to think about as you play. So before we get to Gasket's professions in full, let's talk about its innate ability. So its innate is called Steambot. Its innate plus one is Steambot Pro. And you can find a nice description of these things on the back of Gasket's reference sheet. But essentially, innate Steambot means that Gasket starts with Hydro Valve and Primary Canister skills, which is why they start on the mat. And the other thing it'll tell you here is that skills are not exhausted when used. Typically for most gear locks, when they use a skill die, it's exhausted until the end of battle. However, gasket skills are never actually exhausted after use. You just put them back in the skills area, which is super interesting. And that makes gasket different to play with from anybody else. Another cool aspect of Steambot Innate is that Gasket is able to place defense in active slots that's equal to half of its defense stat rounded up. So here, with a defense of four, Gasket can actually just place two defense in active slots at the start of battle. Once Gasket upgrades to an eight plus one, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the backup plan, it'll get the same benefits as Steambot, but Gasket can now place defense in an active slot equal to its defense stat. So in other words, Gasket can really stack the deck in terms of its ability to defend itself at the start of battle. So those are some pretty good innate abilities. Let's see what Gasket's professions are like. Gasket's first profession is also very much tied to its Steambot innate ability because it starts with Hydro Valve and Primary Canister. Primary Canister is very nice because essentially this is Gasket's energy that it uses. Normally we think of gear locks in terms of dexterity and Gasket does have a dex stat, but with Gasket you need to be thinking about something else, which is its Hydro and that's an additional currency that Gasket spends in order to take its actions on the gear lock map. So at the start of battle, Gasket's always going to place the primary canister and secondary and tertiary canisters if you've got them at max value. 
in a locked die slot. So here's a closer look at our primary canister. It's at full volume when it's on five, but it's gonna tick down various amounts to zero as Gasket does things in battle. So for now, we're gonna put it right here in a locked slot on max value, but this is gonna tick down as you use Gasket. And also if it hits zero and Gasket starts a turn with no Hydro, then it'll take one true damage. So you also don't wanna let Gasket totally run out of steam as it were. The other thing that's gonna happen is that you always have to roll Hydro Valve with your other dice on your turn because Hydro Valve is gonna force you to do one of two things. It's either going to make you drop your Hydro by at least one if you don't use it by the end of the turn, or it's gonna force you to use your backup plan, one or the other. So you have to pay that one dex and roll it and see what it says. So on Hydro Valve, half of the faces look like this, and they mean that Gasket is going to use Hydro. The other half of the faces are these green bones faces, and these are bones that you are forced to put into your backup plan and then use on that turn. But spending Hydro is optional. So what that ultimately means is that when you're looking at Gasket's Hydro-powered profession, you have three different canisters that contain hydro fuel for gaskets to use during the battle. And then you have your hydro valve that's gonna force you to use either at least one hydro or your backup plan. As a hydro mech, I would say this simulates that gasket doesn't have completely free will and instead is subject to some of its programming. So hydro is what we're gonna to use to perform actions in the derail and destroy professions, but Gasket also needs dexterity to do stuff to like just move and also roll dice. And basically how this ends up working with Hydro and Dex is that it still costs Gasket Dex to roll dice. It costs one Dex to roll the Hydro Valve. It costs Dex to move. It also costs Dex for Gasket to roll its skill dice. But in order to actually use the skills, Gasket also has to spend Hydro, which is its second fuel type. So as you play Gasket, you need to be paying attention to how many decks Gasket has and how many Hydro Gasket has to spend. And as I mentioned, this first profession is really all about the Hydro. So you've got the Valve. The primary canister is some fuel. The secondary canister is just yet another fuel canister that maxes out at five. So if you've got it, then it'll go in a locked slot during battle and Gasket can just keep spending down Hydro. The tertiary canister is actually just the same thing. So essentially Gasket can just carry more cans of steam gas to do whatever it needs to do. And that's the hydro power profession. It's hydro, which Gasket uses to perform actions, and the hydro valve die that forces Gasket to either use hydro or its backup plan on every single turn. If when you roll your hydro valve, you get a hydro result, even if you don't do anything on your turn in terms of taking actions with your dice that you would roll that you would need to spend hydro for, at the end of your turn, you will still reduce your Hydro by one if Hydro has not yet been reduced on the turn. So in other words, if you're rolling Hydro, it's going to tick down even if you don't actually spend any of it, even though that's only by one. So be aware of that decreasing supply. There is one other aspect of spending Hydro I want to talk about before we get started, which is that you spend one dex for every die rolled, one dex for every space you move. However, when you're spending Hydro, things get more expensive the further into the turn you get. So when you are using Hydro to purchase skills, let's say that we've got five Hydro because it's our, it's our starting canister. To perform one skill, you reduce Hydro by one, five to four. That's not so expensive, right? But then if you want to use a second skill on the turn, then in order to do that, you have to reduce your Hydro by two. So you'll go from four to two. And then you actually can't do any more skills on this turn once you've done that because it's gonna cost you three in order to do a third skill and you don't have it. So if you wanna do a whole bunch of skills from these professions on your turn, you're gonna to have to have a lot of Hydro to spend. So this game is naturally gonna kind of choke you in terms of how many of Gasket's cool skills you can use. So budget them wisely. All right, so let's take a look at Gasket's mode derail. So this is the first mode that you're gonna use Hydro to power up. There are four skills in here. We have Blitz and Blast and Ram and Scram. Blitz and Ram are kind of starter skills and then Blast and Scram are the upgrades. So let's do Blitz and Blast first and then Ram and Scram second. So Blitz is pretty great. Basically what it does is it allows Gasket to fire energy arcs that do damage to adjacent units. There is a bone side as always because you can't just hit every time, but most of the sides are pretty good. When you roll this die, odds are very good that you'll roll at least a one if not two damage, because there's only one bone space. What's very interesting about the energy arc that comes from your blitz die is that you deal the number of damage on that die to an adjacent unit. 
Then all units adjacent to that unit take the die face minus one damage except for Gasket. So let's say that Gasket is adjacent to the troll youngin. If we roll this die and we do two damage, it'll zap this troll for two. But it would also do one damage to every unit adjacent to the troll. And that means that if there's a gear lock here, they're gonna take a damage. And if there's a different kind of baddie adjacent to the troll, they'll also take that damage. So when Gasket does its skills, you need to be careful about who is around because Gasket can accidentally hurt friends while attacking foes. And the only and the only one who doesn't get hurt when Gasket does this is in fact Gasket. Gasket does not damage itself with its energy arc. So that's how Blitz works. You hurt an adjacent unit of some kind, and then everybody adjacent to that unit takes their damage minus one. That's very cool when it's used correctly. Blast is our upgrade from Blitz, and what this one does is that it allows Gasket to deal damage to a non-adjacent unit. There is a bone side just in case you get unlucky, but all the other sides will have this little blast symbol and then a number, and that's going to represent the amount of damage done to a non-adjacent unit. So Blast would work if Gasket were here in the ranged position attacking the Troll Youngin. So we could roll Blast, and then, ooh, we got our two. So we can Blast this Troll for two damage because Blast damages a non-adjacent unit. Note that unit is the word that is used here and not baddie. This will come into play when we look at some of Gasket's less optional actions later in this video. So that's Blast. It comes in very handy when you want to get somebody who's a little bit away from you. Then we have Ram and Scram. Ram is interesting because sometimes it does damage, sometimes it doesn't, but it does have to do with tactical positioning on the battle map. So again, sometimes you just roll them bones, but other sides have this Ram symbol, sometimes with a one, which would be damage taken by the unit that you ram, and some don't have any damage printed on them at all. So essentially when you use Ram, you're gonna use it on an adjacent unit. So let's say that Gasket is here adjacent to the Troll Youngin. And with Ram, you deal the number of damage on the die to an adjacent unit, so in this case, none. In this case, it would be one. And then you move that unit one position. So one position doesn't mean that you have to move it straight back. We can move the troll young in here, here, or here, because these are all open adjacent positions. You still can't push somebody off the board and you can't push someone into a position that's occupied by somebody else. But if there's a vacant position to move that troll young in two, then Gasket will do that. And then Gasket itself will move into the position that has been emptied by moving the troll youngin. So essentially when you ram somebody, you wanna make sure that there's a place you want them to go and then that you're willing to go into the space they just vacated. If nobody can move, then nobody does. But other than that, you have to follow through on that die roll if you just use it. So that's ram, maybe a little damage, definitely some tactical positioning. And ram leads to scram, which is actually a very handy die because it just lets Gasket do extra movement. While there is a bone space, Scram actually allows Gasket to just move an extra two to four spaces on the battle mat as long as you have the Hydro to pay for it. And with that much movement, in some ways it's actually just cheaper to use Scram to have Gasket move around. So this could maybe be four movement for as little as one Hydro and one Dex, depending on what you rolled and what skills you wanted to use. Whereas four movement would take up all four of Gasket's dexterity. So there may be situations where you want to move Gasket a lot and it's actually cheaper to use Scram to do so. So that is derail. Two of the skills are kind of attacky where Gasket can either zap somebody next to it or at a range and then something tactical with Ram and Scram. So now that we've talked about these, let's actually move into Gasket's third profession, which is mode destroy. It works very similarly to mode derail. It's just got some different skills in it. So let's reset everyone. We'll move Gasket adjacent to the Troll Youngin for this. So there are four skills in mode destroy. So there's cut and gut. Again, cut is the starter skill, which leads to gut. And then grab is a starter skill that leads to get. So we'll cover cut and gut, and then grab and get. I'm personally a big fan of cut and gut. It's a very brutal combination, as you're gonna see. So cut, if you look at the cut die, most of these die faces look extremely similar, and that's because they are. It's basically all the same face, and then one side that is bones. So, you know, you can have a roll that doesn't go the way you want. Maybe you put it in your backup plan. But cut puts a bleed effect on adjacent units, and then note the little people symbol in the bottom left. That is because cut doesn't just put a bleed effect on the adjacent unit. It also puts a bleed effect on the unit directly behind that unit. So essentially, if there was someone else here, Gasket will be able to put bleed on this troll youngin and whoever's behind him. So bleed on two units in a row 
in the direction that Gasket is cutting. And that's something to be really careful about because if there's a gear lock back here, Gasket will cut them too. So cut is something that doesn't distinguish between friends and enemies. It cuts an adjacent unit and the one behind. And of course, bleed effects are pretty brutal because they force a unit to take true damage over time. A unit with a bleed effect on it will take one true damage at the start of its turn. So you really don't want to do that to your friends. So that is cut. It's brutal, but it's pretty fun. Then you have gut, which actually works in conjunction with cut. These dice are clearly meant to work together. So once you have cut someone and they have a bleed effect on them, then they are vulnerable to the next die in the series, which is gut. Gut has this little bleeding heart on it. And then sometimes there's a number printed on the die as well, up to two. So in order to use gut, you basically have to use it on an adjacent unit that has a bleed effect on it. So if we'd already used cut to make the troll bleed, then we could use gut on it to have further damaging effects. So when you gut somebody, you do the damage on the die. So if I had rolled this result, we would do two damage to the troll youngin. And then we put this die on him. And basically gut will just sit there until the troll is dead. And it takes one true damage for every position it moves. So this troll essentially has a death notice on it because whenever it tries to do anything, it starts bleeding to death. So if you've already cut somebody on the battle mat, if you gut them, it just causes more and more true damage in combination with that bleed effect, and it just makes everything worse for them. Excellent for you, unless you accidentally cut one of your friends, which is why you have to be very careful with these skills. Now we can talk about grab and get. Grab is something that you should be doing at a range. It is a die that you deploy against units that are two to three spaces away from Gasket. So let's say that Gasket is here again. Let's, let's be ranged for this one. So grab. Sometimes it's not successful, but usually it is. There is a little hand on here, a grabby hand, and sometimes that grabby hand squeezes hard and does a little bit of damage. I wouldn't use this die specifically for the damage, but occasionally you get a little bonus HP drop on your target. So basically when you roll grab, it allows you to deal the damage on the die face to a unit that's two or three positions away, and then you place the grab die on that unit, and that lasts for the entire battle. And basically while the grab die is on that unit, that unit's attack stat is reduced by one. So this troll youngin's attack stat actually is one, it only rolls one attack die. So basically it would completely render that troll helpless because it couldn't do anything while grab was on it. So grab is convenient because it might do a little bit of damage and then it kind of hobbles the baddie or the unit that you put grab on. The only way for that unit to get rid of the grab die is for it to stop being two to three positions away from Gasket. So officially the rule says when the unit is no longer two to three positions away from Gasket, then grab is removed. So if you are within one position of Gasket, the grab die would be removed. Or if it's one, two, it's hard to get four positions away from Gasket. But let's say that we made it all the way up here somehow. That would be more than three positions away from Gasket and therefore the grab die would be removed. So grab is excellent because it kind of hobbles an enemy that's within a certain range of you. And it's a range that's pretty easy to maintain unless the enemy gets into close quarters. So let's say that we've grabbed this troll. That actually makes it possible for us to use the next die in the sequence, which is get. This is the get over here aspect of this die. So again, one side's a bumps, but the others are these little chains. And sometimes the chains do just a little bit of damage. But when you roll get, you can only roll it and then use it on an, a unit that has grab already on it. So when you use get, you deal the number of damage printed on the die face to that unit. So we would do one to the troll youngin if we rolled this face. And then we would remove grab and then place this unit on a position that's adjacent to us. So grab might do a little bit of damage and it also pulls the baddie that had grab on it over to you. So this, so these dice have a little bit of an ability to hurt or hobble enemies and then also they force baddies into positions where you want them, if used correctly. So now it's time to talk about Gasket's last profession, which is Mode Direct. And this is maybe the profession that has the most possibility, but also the highest risk. And that is because this is a programming profession where Gasket is able to use these dice for free. They don't cost dex, they don't cost hydro, but Gasket also has to do what's on them when you roll them. And they all have to be resolved as a group. 
You can resolve them at any point in the resolve your roll phase. You can choose the order that you resolve them in. But once you start resolving your directed dice, you have to resolve all of them before you can do anything else. No interruptions with other skills. So if you want to try out programming, get ready. It could be quite a ride. The first directed die is called Directive Sustain. And this is actually the only one with new symbols compared to the other dice you've seen so far. This shield basically requires Gasket to place defense on an adjacent unit, which means that if Gasket is next to other gear locks, that's great. But if Gasket is next to a baddie, then it's actually helping the enemy. Oops. And these feet mean shift, and they require Gasket to move to one adjacent position. Uh, Gasket cannot reoccupy a position it was already in on this turn, so it has to move somewhere else. If it can't move, it doesn't. But if it can, you have to do it. There is a red bones face, which means that if you rolled this one, you must place it in your backup plan. No options there. And you can also end up with one Hydra, depending on how you roll. The next die is called Directive Utility. And this one can force Gasket to shift, in other words, move to an adjacent space that's unoccupied. This grab must be used if at all possible, which means you might end up grabbing a gear lock if there's not a baddie in the correct range. Or ram, which forces Gasket to ram any adjacent unit and move into their space, even if you don't necessarily want to, that is the risk of rolling the die. And then of course there are red bone faces that must end up in the backup plan. No choices here. And then our last directive die is directive aggro, which is exactly what it sounds like. There is a red bone face, but Gasket can also have to use an energy arc, which does damage to an adjacent unit, but not the ones around it, because the value on it is only one. Gasket can be forced to use blast, which is the attack at range that we discussed as part of the derail mode profession. Gasket may have to shift, so that is just movement. Or again, you can get some red bones to put into your backup plan. So what is interesting about these dice is that depending on where Gasket is positioned and what comes up, because every single one of them has to be done. Once you roll your directive dice, you have to do what's on them. There's no option to choose not to do them or to ignore the die. Then Gasket has to do everything. So that means that if Gasket gets a shield result and has to put a defense die on a baddie because that's the only type of unit that's adjacent to it, then that's what happens. If Gasket has a bunch of allies positioned near the only baddie that can be attacked with an energy arc, well, then that's what's going to happen. Gasket is going to use that energy arc, and then it's going to do some collateral damage to all of the allies surrounding the unit that Gasket attacked. And if Gasket has to attack a fellow Gearlock in order to fulfill the conditions of the die, then that's what it has to do. So these dice are amazing in the sense that they don't cost anything. They don't cost any decks. They don't cost any hydro. You can just use them. But they can have some unintended consequences. Even getting a whole bunch of shift dice and making Gasket move to a place that you don't want to move Gasket to uh, can cause problems. At the same time, you can get some really awesome combos that you can deploy for free to help everybody on the battle map. So the programming can be super fun. You get to resolve the dice in any order you want. You get to kind of figure out how to best use them, but they come with some pretty serious risks. So those are all Gasket's professions on the Gearlock mats. Let's talk about this power converter. I just had it on a blank face because I didn't want to talk about it yet. <laughs> but now we are ready to talk. So I mentioned that Gasket likes to burn loot. That is true, and I'm going to tell you how. So normally power converter is set at just zero, and those blank faces are extra faces. Power converter is charged by burning loot. So as the back of Gasket's Gearlock reference sheet is going to tell you, Gasket can hold loot, Gasket can trade loot, and it can even help unlock a trove loot, but Gasket doesn't actually use loot in a normal way. So any loot that Gasket holds, Gasket can discard in order to do one of two things. One is to set the power converter to its max value, so in that case we would be at three. So three is the power converter max. Or Gasket can discard it to set Hydro Valve on a desired side this turn. So you can save decks by doing that because then you don't actually have to roll that die. It requires a roll. And it also has the added benefit of, let's say that you're trying to get to your innate plus one and you don't want to be forced to use your backup plan, then burning loot can keep your backup plan safe from the ravages of your die roll for a couple of turns until you get what you need. So when the power converter is set to max, what it does is it allows Gasket to heal. So once you have charged it all the way up by discarding a loot card, so you've basically incinerated it thematically, then this can be used at any time in Gasket's turn to heal one HP, and you can use it more than once. So you can just knock your power converter all the way down to zero and heal by three HP, 
if gas gets max HP will allow it. And then you decrease the power converter in accordance with the number of HP that you gained. So the power converter is Gasket's way of using loot. It incinerates it in order to charge this up. And then you can use the power converter to either heal HP or have some impact on that hydro valve. So now that we're on the back of this sheet, let's also talk about Gasket's backup plan, which sometimes you're gonna get forced to use depending on how you roll that hydro valve. So you need to definitely know what the options are when you're on it. So for one bone, you can do what's called hot fix. Gasket can add or increase a defense die by one. Gasket starts with pretty low health, and so it's pretty nice to be able to bolster Gasket's defense early on. And don't forget that Gasket's innate ability also allows it to put some defense in active slots at the very start of a battle. So hot fix lets you kind of maintain that extra defense as you go. Two bones is just nothing, so you probably don't want to roll the hydro valve and get forced to waste two bones for just hotfix. So, you know, you want to think about that as you're building your backup plan out. Here we have dehumidifier, and this one's cool because gasket can gain one hydro and then also add or increase a defense die by one. So this gives gasket a little bit more fuel to work with, and we know the gasket absolutely needs hydro in order to function. For four dice, you can do what's called a reprogram. So as we discussed, the direct dice, when you roll them, you have to apply all the results. There's no way out of it. But with reprogram, let's say that you're willing to risk that twice. So you can roll your directed dice, and then you apply that first set of results. Then you can roll them again by spending four bones from your backup plan, and then you have to apply them all again. So maybe you just want to do it twice. You had a combo so nice, you can use a reprogram to try for it one more time. But do it at your own risk. You just never know what your directors are going to be. For five bones, you can spend those for power spike. That is a huge attack. Be very careful when you use it, but it's awesome. So basically, if Gasket is next to a unit, Gasket will deal three damage to an adjacent unit. So the troll youngin would take three damage. But then all units adjacent to that unit would take two damage, yikes. And then all units adjacent to those units would take one damage. So you can't damage the same unit more than once, but essentially what Gasket does is he poof, causes a ripple effect through the entire battle mat that's so big that probably you're gonna affect some of your allies if you're playing co-op. And the only kind of unit that doesn't just get hurt by this is just Gasket. So Gasket can essentially do a huge power spike that goes poof, like out through the battle mat, hurting an adjacent baddie by three, all of their adjacent units by two, and then all of those adjacent units by one, which is pretty epic. And then if you get six bones, then you upgrade to an A plus one, which lets Gasket upgrade from Steambot to Steambot Pro. Basically is the same as Steambot, except that you can put your entire defense stat in active slots as opposed to just half. So that more or less sums up Gasket. I wanna talk about the beginner build strat really quick before we finish this video. So you can always trust Chip through to give you some good advice. Stats, it will tell you that HP is a must early on. This is very true. Gasket starts with only one HP and you really need it. You need to add at least one right away. And then maybe an attack to stay dangerous. Then you're definitely gonna wanna add some more HP because you just absolutely need it. One and even two, it's just not enough HP. Then your dex is gonna become more important further on because you're gonna wanna throw more dice because you're gonna have more skills and you're gonna wanna see what you get. Skills. The recommendation is that cut is great early game when you don't have a whole bunch of damage. I love cut. I completely agree. And then after that, directives offer free dice every turn. And then ram gives you some movement that can aid in positioning. So don't forget, you have a lot of skills that are based on where a baddie is in relationship to you. So something like ram can be pretty helpful. I personally do like to get directives early. I'm willing to just take the risk because they are free and that makes them awesome. And that more or less covers Gasket. Gasket can be a little bit complex as a character because you have to manage your decks and your hydro, but it's also very powerful as long as its hydro and directed dice are properly budgeted. Get ready for some very intense attacks from Gasket and also some very interesting uses of loot. Gasket may not officially be a gear lock because it is a hydro mech, but I definitely like to play it and I hope that you do too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with yet another gear lock guide. And for now, happy gaming.